in a universe where dreams take flight, one ordinary astronaut will embark on an extraordinary journey to discover the magic beyond our world. Get ready to take off. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Wow. Stellar Dreams, coming soon to a galaxy near you. That's right. AI-generated films are now a reality, and the best part is that you can create them entirely for free. In this video, I will demonstrate how to make Disney Pixar-style AI-generated animations entirely for free. I will show you how to properly generate still images using an amazing free image generator, and how to transform these images into high-quality animation scenes. So let's get started. Here's how this method works. You want to start by generating an image of the scene you want to create. Then, you can bring this image to life and influence the outcome with detailed prompts and inputs to get precisely what you want, which I will explain in detail later in this video. I wanted to create a trailer for a non-existing Disney Pixar-style movie, so I used ChatGPT to generate a script for a short, non-existing Disney Pixar-style trailer. And based on this script, I will create the images. So let's begin with that. For these images, I'm using Leonardo AI. You can generate 150 images for free every day. And if you know how to use this, you can definitely create ultra-realistic images. I want to create a Disney Pixar style animation, so I will use the 3D animation model. Now, let me show you two methods for creating the perfect images for your animations. To help you start, I will give you my prompt template that I like to use as a starting point for my images. Start with a subject, followed by a description of the scene, and end with the desired style of the image. For instance, in the case of my film, a young boy astronaut with brown hair and a blue spacesuit on a space shuttle launch site in a Disney Pixar movie style. Before you hit generate, you want to ensure that all the settings are correct. I could create an entire video series on how to use these settings properly. However, the most critical elements are disabling the photoreal, alchemy, and prompt magic sliders, especially if you're using the free version. Otherwise, your generations will cost a lot of credits. And since I'm going to make a long-form video for YouTube, I'll choose a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Now select Generate. And these results are already very impressive. However, if it's not quite what you're looking for, I suggest two things. First, begin by describing what you want to add to the image. For example, I want the scene to take place on Earth, so I will add a comma and write bright blue skies. The second thing I recommend is enabling negative prompts. Here, you can specify what you don't want to see in the image. For instance, I don't want to have multiple characters in the image, and I don't want it to take place in space or do I want to have a space shuttle taking off? Once you are done, again hit Generate. Lovely! This is exactly what I want. It's important to upscale the image to achieve the best possible quality when generating the animation. So, go to More Image Upscalers and select the HD Crisp Upscale option. Now, download the image. The second method I like to use involves a reference image. Let's say you're looking for a specific setting or want to recreate something that already exists. In this case, you can search for an image you want to recreate online. And input it into the image input section of Leonardo. Then, simply use the same prompt template as a starting point. If you're not satisfied with the initial results, follow the same steps as with regular image generation, and you'll get something like this. Now, let's bring these images to life. To do this, I'll use Pika Labs. Simply visit their website and select Join Beta, and you'll be directed to Discord. This process is very similar to generating with Midjourney. Pika Labs has multiple generation rooms where you can start creating videos. However, since many people are active in these rooms, 
it's easy to lose track of your generated videos. So, I recommend opening a private chat with the Pika bot. To do this, simply right-click on the Pika bot in the top right corner and select Message. This way, you'll see only your own generations. To begin generating, type A, forward slash, and select Animate. Here, you can upload the image you created with Leonardo. The next step is to start with your prompt. And this is where it gets a bit technical, so pay close attention. You want to start with a written prompt and follow a similar prompt template I used in Leonardo. Again, start with a subject, so a young boy with brown hair and a blue spacesuit. Next is the scene. However, now you want to give a description of the scene really focusing on the movement. Describe what is happening in the scene. Keep in mind that Pika Labs can only generate videos that are 3 seconds long, so you can't ask for too much. For instance, walking towards the camera. And again, end with the style of the video. Next, you want to paste these six metrics. Behind these metrics, you can fill in a couple of different things to influence the outcome of the generation. The first one is your negative prompt. Again, this works very similarly to the negative prompt of Leonardo. Here, you can fill in what you don't want to see in the video. For instance, the boy walking away from the camera. However, just like with Leonardo, I would always start without a negative prompt and fill it in after your first generation. So let's delete this for now. Next is your FPS, or frames per second. You can fill in a value between 8 and 24, which means 8 frames per second or 24 frames per second. For those who don't know, a video is simply a compilation of a series of photos. When you play these photos in chronological order, you get a video. The more photos you have, the smoother your video looks. So, I'm going to put it on the maximum of 24. However, I will also generate one with a lower value right after this one. Preferably, you want to have a lower frame rate because when you have a high frame rate, Pika Labs needs to generate a lot more frames, and therefore there is a larger chance of the video getting distorted. The next step is the guidance scale. This controls how closely the generated video follows the prompt. A higher guidance scale will result in a video that is more closely related to the prompt, but it may be less creative, and you have a higher chance of distortion. A lower guidance scale will result in a video that is more creative, but it may be less related to the prompt. Here you can again input a value between 8 to 24, and I always start somewhere in the middle. The camera feature allows you to control the movement of the camera in the generated video. You can, for instance, instruct it to zoom out, zoom in, pan right or pan left, and a lot more. Camera movement is especially important when you want to have moving elements in your videos. And I will show you why in a second. So let's delete the camera movement for now so we have a still video. And next, I will add some camera movement so you will see the difference. Next is the amount of motion you can add to the generation. You can add anything between 0 and 3, with 0 being very little motion and 3 being a lot of motion. I'd always like to start with 1. The last part is the seed number. The seed is simply a random number that determines the outcome of the video. You just pick a random number, and if you generate it again without making changes to the prompt and use the same seed number, you get the same outcome. However, if you generate it again, also with the same prompt, but this time only changing the seed number, you will get a slight variation of the outcome. So you could change this if the outcome is very close to what you want but not quite. One thing I would always recommend is to immediately generate another video with a slight variant of the prompt. Generating the video will take a minute, and it doesn't matter if you generate one or more at the same time. This way, you can already test different variations of the prompt to see which one works best, which will save you a lot of time. The easiest way to do this is to select the arrows below the generation you just made. This way you can remix the prompt you just made without having to upload the image again and copy the prompt yourself. So let's, for instance, change the frames per second to a lower value to see the difference. All right, let's see what Pika has made of the video.
you can clearly see that in both cases, there is little to no movement. So, here is what you want to do. Once again, select the arrows to change the prompt. What I'm going to do is add camera motion to the generation. And this is where you want to pay close attention. I want to make the boy walk towards the camera. If you want to do this, you want to make the camera zoom out. This way the camera is moving backwards, and therefore the subject in the video will follow. If you would want the boy to walk backwards you would have to prompt it to walk backwards. And then, you would want to set the camera motion to zoom in. So let's set it to zoom out. And I will also set one to zoom in, just to see what will happen. In both cases, the boy is actually moving forward. However, you can clearly see that the camera zoom out version looks much better. However, there is still some odd stuff happening with the boy's right arm and legs. So, the next step would be to add negative prompts. Now you can start to add what you don't want to see or happen in the video, like distortion, adding extra limbs, the boy waving his arms, and a deforming body. I'm also going to increase the guidance scale, so the generation follows the prompt more closely. And again, I will immediately generate a different version, this time with an even higher guidance scale to see if that one turns out better or worse. This is already looking very promising. The body movement is looking good, and you can definitely see that the one with the lower guidance scale looks a little better. However, now the face is starting to deform. So let's adjust the prompt again. This time, I want to see if lowering the guidance scale even more results in something better. And I'm going to add another negative prompt, which hopefully minimizes the deformation in the face. And as always, I will also generate another variation, this time with a lower motion value. That is actually looking very good. You can definitely see that the version with the higher motion value looks the best. Once you are happy, you can download the video. So, these are the basics of how you should use this tool. Upload an image, write a prompt focusing on the video's motion and start adjusting the values based on the previous generations until you are satisfied with the result. I would always recommend you use a video upscaler to enhance the quality after you downloaded the video from Pika. This will make a big difference. CapCut has a very powerful and free online upscaler. Once you have every scene completed, you want to continue with the editing. But before you start your editing, you really want to pick the right background song and sound effects for your film. The right background music and sound effects are the most crucial elements that help bring your videos to life. I like to use Epidemic Sound for this, simply because they have one of the largest collections of very high quality music and sounds. And also so I know for sure I'm not going to run into copyright issues. I have put all the links to every tool I used in the description of this video. You also want to generate the voiceover. I always like to use Fleeky for this because they have the largest database of super realistic voiceovers available. Fleeky has a free trial, but there are also some free alternatives available. For editing, you can use any editing program you like, but I highly recommend CapCut. It's a free and very user-friendly editing software that I use for all of my videos. Simply import all your elements into your editing program and edit the video to your liking. If you don't have any experience with editing, I would recommend watching a couple of tutorials about the program you prefer to use. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you like this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. This will help get this video more views, which helps me make more of these videos for you. Thanks for watching, and until next time.